top news story. Two years ago today, the public first learned that studi uh, 38 Studios was in financial trouble. And that's where we'll begin our coverage this noon hour. Thank you for joining us on NBC 10 News at noon. Now the Rhode Island legislature is debating whether to pay off the bonds that backed 38 Studios, Kurt Schilling's failed video game company. It was NBC 10 political reporter Bill Rapley who first made the story public two years ago. And he's in our newsroom now with a recap of the demise of the company founded by the Red Sox pitcher. Bill? Well, Frank, this certainly was a story that state officials were hoping never would happen. A complete failure of the company that received the lion's share of a new job guarantee program that Governor Don Cacheri hoped would be the foundation of an economic boom in Providence. It was famous Red Sox pitcher Kurt Schilling. He had a startup company that he was expanding. He'd had little luck, as in no luck, getting backers in Massachusetts. Was eager, eager to take the $75 million from the Rhode Island Economic Development Corporation in the spring of 2010. At that time, he moved his company to Empire Street in Providence, that's September, and then the bonds were sold in November. 2011, Lincoln Chafee became governor. The company released a first game in February of 2012, but it was already spending money fast. The game sales did not match the rate at which it was spending money. We had heard there was trouble, and then in May, Governor Chafee confirmed it. Well, we're working with 38 studios on different issues, and that's all I have to report right now. When could these issues be resolved, and who else is working on them besides your administration? We worked over the weekend on them and continued today, and so we're putting every effort into stabilizing any of the issues that 38 Studios is having. And would that be uh, in terms of making the, do they have bond payments that are due? Is that what it is? All the issues that uh, keep any Rhode Island company we, uh, solvent, we'd all, always be concerned with. And it was that key word, keeping the company solvent, that triggered the rush of news about that. Soon later, the company closed the store, and then the debates began over who was at fault, who had pushed the risky deal through the legislature, and whether the state should pay back the bonds. And now, two years later, we hear the state police are looking into possible criminal violations in the whole deal. So we will take a look tonight at what has changed since that ill-fated bond deal first began publicly falling apart two years ago tonight. I'm Bill Rapley, NBC 10 News in the newsroom.